Hi, I'm Certified Executive Chef Wayne Smith from Western Colorado Community College and President of the American Culinary Federation Colorado Chefs Association. And I'm Joan Brewster, Executive Director of the ACF Colorado Chefs Association. We're proud to be one of the leading culinary organizations in the United States. We're pleased to introduce From the Ranch Gate to the Dinner Plate, a project developed by the Colorado Lamb Council and the American Lamb Board. We support local farmers and ranchers and we welcome this opportunity to educate culinary students on the unique properties of American lamb. America's sheep farmers and ranchers produce high quality food and fiber in an ever changing and increasingly complex environment. Stewards of the land, these farmers and ranchers provide wildlife habitat, open space and a myriad of other benefits that enhance our communities and our nation. Most Americans are several generations removed from background in production agriculture and have little first hand knowledge about where their food comes from and how that food is produced. On average, American lamb is a lean, nutritious protein source. This mild tasting, tender red meat is ideal for any meal. From summertime grilling to center of the plate at America's finest restaurants, every meal is an opportunity to showcase the great taste and versatility of American lamb. American lamb is raised from coast to coast and border to border. The Ranch Gate to Dinner Plate DVD was filmed in Colorado and takes a seasonal look at production practices in that state. Sheep producers fall into two general categories, farm flock or open range producers. Farm flocks range in size from a few sheep to several hundred. Found throughout the United States, farm flocks are raised in pastures and pens that are enclosed by perimeter fences. Range sheep operations vary in size from a few hundred sheep to thousands of sheep in a single ranching operation. Because of the vast amount of land required for grazing, open range sheep operations are located in the western United States, and many ranches rely on federal land grazing allotments as part of their operation. Open range grazing means there are few, if any, fences to help control the movement of sheep. Springtime in the Rockies means shearing and lambing. Ewes are sheared prior to lambing, and most lambing occurs in March and April. Wool is an important economic component to western range operations. Most ranchers run dual purpose breeds of sheep. These breeds optimize the best qualities of both meat and wool breeds of sheep, with typically more of an emphasis on meat production. On the other hand, Australia almost exclusively focuses on wool production and to a large degree New Zealand. Historically, Australia and New Zealand have dominated the global market in both wool and meat production. In early summer, when the snow is melted in the high country and the lambs are big enough to travel, the sheep are trailed or trucked to the high country. A large flock of sheep on a western range outfit is referred to as a band of sheep and typically consists of about a thousand head of ewes plus their lambs. The band of sheep is taken care of by one or two herders working with especially trained herding dogs and the critically important livestock protection dogs that are used to ward off predators. After spending their summer grazing on lush mountain grass, the sheep are trailed to shipping corrals in late September or early October. The ewes are separated from the lambs and trailed or trucked off the mountain to lower elevation fall and winter pastures. Fall pasture often means grazing on crop aftermath, such as leftover hay, corn stalks, beet, onions, or other crop residue left after harvest. Most Colorado range operations winter their ewes in the high desert country of western Colorado and eastern Utah. Most lambs are destined to be trucked to eastern Colorado to be grain finished at a feedlot. Some of the larger lambs coming off the mountain are sold as grass finished bypassing the feedlot and going directly to a processing facility. 
A good grass-finished lamb will weigh approximately 120 to 130 pounds, and a feedlot lamb may typically weigh 60 to 100 pounds when it arrives and is fed to an ideal finishing weight of 135 to 150 pounds. I run a primarily grass-based uh, lamb program. Being able to take product down and sell it is good. Uh, and I've even got a few World War II vets that were you know, staunch lamb haters that have kind of like converted. And that, that's always fun. But little kids, I, I, I so love giving uh, meatballs or, or little pieces of roast or, or um, a, a, a lamb burger to some vegetarian kid and they're like, oh look mommy, you know, and then they're all freaking out. And, but the, the kids like it. We began about five years ago with a pilot program with Whole Foods. Uh, before that, we just um, sold, you know, to, uh, we marketed through different avenues. Through Whole Foods, though, we, um, it took some leg work and it took some good building relationships, but um, we started five years ago with it. We brought some of their people up to the ranch and brought them up to our forest permits. They got to see hands-on our operation and how we've done things for generations. It fit well into their program. And therefore, um, after different paperwork and different things that had to be done, we decided to, to go ahead and pursue it from both sides. And we now market our lamb through Whole Foods. We also have um, some local consumers that, that we provide lamb for every year. And um, that's the majority of where our lamb goes. Some marketing efforts attempt to promote either grass-finished or grain-finished lamb at the expense of one product over the other. It is safe to say that if you were raised on grass-finished meat, that's probably your preference. If you were raised on grain-finished meat, then that's probably your preference. People tend to market their products based on their personal preference, thus giving rise to the grass-finished, grain-finished debate. The truth of the matter is that both production practices produce an outstanding product. A lot of people wonder why why do we have a confinement feedlot or you know a confined feeding operation? It is an integral integral part of the industry. It's a tool that we need to spread our inventory out year round. Uh, we currently have a one-time capacity of about 65,000 lambs that we can feed at one time, and we're averaging somewhere between 185 to 210,000 lambs through this facility annually. Uh, the lambs that we that we bring in are mostly come from all around us and here in the western United States. You know, Colorado is pretty centrally located, so we're able to draw lambs from California, Nevada, Idaho, Wyoming, all around us, and that typically gives us a year-round supply. The feed availability over on this side, there's a lot of silage corn grown, which we feed. Uh, there's a lot of whole corn grown. I mean, we can make up a, a nice ration in this area that's that that uh, it makes for efficient growth in our animals with that feed availability uh, to have these lambs in one area like that makes us more so much more efficient we're not running up and down the country roads to different areas and trying to to get everything fed it, it allows us to bring the feed and and compile the feed as well as have the inventory of live lambs in one location where we can we can take care of everything in one spot and it just makes us more efficient that way and the beauty of, of uh, our industry and, and this facility that we have here, it allows us to continually sort the heavy end off our lambs and get them to market in timely fashion. During its life, a lamb will be given vaccines as a preventative measure to ensure good health and may be treated with antibiotics or other medicine in the unlikely event that it becomes sick. If an animal is treated with medication, that animal is marked and monitored. It is monitored to help make sure that it fully recovers as well as making sure it is safely passed drug withdrawal time and is safe to enter the food chain. Identifying and monitoring a sick animal is a simple and routine on-farm management practice. However, most lambs will never need to be doctored. In regards to, to health and, and well-being of the animals and how they're handled here, what we do, uh, number one is we buy the biggest percentage of our lambs come out of the country or off the range, which we feel is the healthiest, healthiest environment to bring livestock in from. You've got one background, uh, typically a very healthy uh, grass-fed or, or range operation that, that the lambs come in, they're, in, they're healthy, they're uniform, 
so we really have little little trouble getting the lambs started. If we do, we're, we, we're able to sort those lambs off and handle them individually. Uh, but we try pretty hard to get extra vitamins, minerals, and electrolytes into our waters and, and things that, like a Gatorade that boosts them and gets, them, gets that uh, energy up and gets their, their rumen active and gets them anxious to start eating feed. And uh, we've had very good success staying in the country buying those types of lambs and the kind of program that we're working on. We, we don't typically like to have to treat a lot of lambs, and that's the beauty of, of handling range quality livestock. You, you don't have the health issues that you might come in from different, so many different backgrounds. So that's a definite plus for us here in the feed yard. America's sheep producers also strive to use efficient, low-stress handling techniques to help maintain healthy flocks.